Hello, you buggers. Flat Earth science is preposterous. Flat Earth scientists are pretty unhinged. Although this guy was about to be the first Flat Earther to gain some accolade, even if it was just a Darwin Award. He wanted to observe the curve of the Earth, or lack of it, himself. But Flat Earth observations are usually intellectually dishonest, and conclusions are often handled with the mental adeptness of a child trying to fit a round peg into a square hole. But if it's observational data you want, here's one for you. It's a great time at the moment to observe the International Space Station. Now, wait a minute, Fred, before you say, NASA fake, it doesn't exist. That's all totally irrelevant. You can observe it. And this very simple tracker shows you exactly where it is. Very simple to understand, no astronomical skills required. Now the interesting thing is, it's never wrong. Here's me capturing the object with a crappy camcorder. You don't even need that. You can just use your eyes. Now the ISS tracker told me it would be overhead, and it was. As simple as that. It was travelling west to east, at a nice steady velocity. Now the tracker website displays the path on an extra rectangular map. Now my experience with flurfers on my 360 high altitude balloon video proved one thing. They cannot understand extra rectangular maps. Or well, much of anything really. Now why does the ISS path do a little dance north and south of the equator? When we map the rectangular map onto a sphere, it simply shows the orbit as a straightforward circular path around the Earth. The 1.5 and minus 1.5 hour paths, uh, it will become clear in a bit. Just for the sake of argument, we can map the rectangular map onto a flat Earth. And Fluffers would say it still works. At first glance, it doesn't look any more idiotic than some of their other celestial models. But we do need to look a little closer. Uh, here is a quick and dirty model of the ISS in an orbit around the globe. About one and a half hours per orbit, 16 orbits a day. Now, if we take that back onto the rectangular map, you can see how those orbit paths travel across the Earth in one day. Now the reason the ISS travels across the entire Earth is not because it's travelling round the globe laterally, it's because the Earth is spinning beneath it. If the Earth didn't spin, the ISS would appear above the same part of the Earth every 90 minutes. Projecting this equirectangular map onto a flat Earth, we can see the day's orbit paths. Can any flat earther explain the mechanics of this spirograph pattern the ISS seems to travel in, following the position of the ISS based on the tracker software, of which there are many, and remembering it can be observed with even the dumbest of eyeballs? Now let's run the animation. Immediately we see a problem. For the ISS to be in the predicted and verifiable positions, it has to accelerate below the equator and decelerate above the equator. Something that plainly does not happen. There are no observations of the ISS streaking across the sky at high speed. So there you have it, Flurfers. The ISS proves the Earth is spinning and proves we cannot be on a flat Earth model. The only way to make it work is, is to pull the drawstring around the edge of the flat Earth tight. Oh, that will make a globe. Till next time, you buggers.